those are a batch of our silky chicks that we hatched um actually just like a couple days ago they are waiting to go to their new homes um if you guys didn't know we actually have uh, two breeding flocks of chicken uh, we have our splash americanas that we are breeding and then we have uh, bearded silkies that we breed and that's just we love silkies personally so um our silkies we've hatched chicks before in the past and usually we sell them uh, quarterly throughout the year just to help with the cost of chicken feed um, and also cover any expenses that they encumber like um, housing and stuff like that. Um, exciting though is going on right here. This is our incubator that we've got set up and we've got Americana eggs incubating right now. Now there is some, some silky eggs in there as well just because we have a huge demand for them. Um, I've got actually we have a waiting list for these, but then we have uh, our Splash Americana eggs incubating this in there as well. It's particularly exciting because we haven't hatched any eggs from our new braiding flock, um, and that was because we wanted to just like get to the point where they were laying enough that we could still collect eggs for ourselves to eat and collect eggs. So um, they've been laying very well the last couple weeks, and so we went ahead and we collected them. I think we've got about 37 eggs in the incubator right now, which is like a lot. Um, I also discovered, I think I've been incubating the eggs wrong. Um, so normally whenever you're incubating eggs, you would do it at, everywhere I read was 99.5 degrees Fahrenheit for the entire period. And then of course, 40 to 50% humidity for the first 18 days and then 65 to 75% humidity for the final days during hatching and lockdown. I learned last night actually that that's for forced air incubators and apparently I have a still air incubator which with a still air in still air incubator you're apparently supposed to run between 100 and 100 100.5 to 102 I, I mean I've had success with hatching at 99.5 degrees but um I mean technically there's no fan in this so it is a still air so I went ahead and I bumped the air up, the temperature up to 100.5 degrees. Hopefully we'll have a better hatch rate. That'd actually be cool. Maybe that was, I mean, we have a pretty good hatch rate to begin with. Usually we get about, uh, I'd say it's probably about 75% hatch rate, which I mean, I'm, I'm like, that's pretty good, but maybe we can get even better hatch rates. That'd be awesome. So we're actually in the works of planning a new coop for the Silkies. Uh, the coop that they're currently in is actually the coop that we had it was like our very first coop we ever built back when the chickens used to live in our backyard at our current house. Technically, we weren't supposed to have them here, but we learned that later on. But now they're at the pasture. We're in compliance. We're good. Um, anyways, so the coop that they have, it's old. We never finished the roof. It works, but whenever we have like the serious Florida rainstorms, they do get exposed to wet to, to water. They get they get wet, and I just I hate it. So. We're now finally at the point where we're gonna actually rebuild them a new coop and we decided to go ahead and just do the coop that we're going to have when we're moved out there so we're not like building a temporary coop and then building another coop. So I was drawing up plans for it last night. So um, I wanna make it cute, I'll make it like a little cottage. The silkies don't rotate just because silky chickens are a little bit more um, susceptible to predators. They're not as, uh, I don't want to say that they're not as hardy as other chickens, but I noticed that the silkies, they're just easier to get. They're, they're little puff balls of cuteness and adorableness, but they ain't got no like survivability. So um, the silkies, which are separated from the pasture flock intentionally because they are two separate breeding flocks and we don't want them, the roosters mixing, they're gonna be stationary and I like to have chickens near the garden so that I can toss uh, vegetable scraps, things like that. And whenever I am cleaning out their bedding, I have I can just move right to my compost pile to put in the garden down the road. So they're gonna actually probably be set on the back side of the garden, but I'll show you guys. I'll actually probably incorporate that into our, uh, our site plan because I need to actually get that video out for you guys so you guys can see we're doing it we're gonna do I'm actually working on a video right now where we're gonna do a digital like a virtual walkthrough of our future farmhouse because um, we are we're just waiting on underwriting so I think like any any time now any day now we're gonna get a word from our agent hey we're closed get to work and um, that's gonna be amazing 
So um, I need to do that virtual tour of our future farmhouse so you guys can see what it's gonna look like. Um, I've also got this really cool thing where we're actually gonna also do like a virtual walkthrough of what the property, we intend for the property to look like. Obviously things might still change here and there, but kind of uh, where we're planning on things to be. And you guys can kind of get a, I'm, I'm really excited about it because if it comes together, it's gonna be really nice. Mr. Early Bird got up nice and early and did all of his house chores. And now he's taking a little break before we go out to the pasture. So he's playing on our switch. Leon, actually, um, we actually recently set him up because he wants to, he wanted to earn money. He wanted to make money so that he could buy the things that he wants. And while we do do some farm tours, we're not out at the farm working every day. So we can't really like pay him as a farm hand, unfortunately. So he has actually started picking up some uh, cleaning. He has become our, our housekeeper. And uh, cause I currently, I'm, Davis works full time. I, on top of like the YouTube and things like that, I actually have a lot of things that I do. Of course, Leon's homeschooled. I run a photography company where I do weddings and portraits. And then I have a online uh, used bookstore. And that's kind of like we have an Amazon business. So I, I do a lot of different things. So I needed help around the house with cleaning and Leon wanted money. So we started paying him a salary. He has charts. Actually, here I can show you guys right quick. It's actually really, really cool. Uh, Leon loves like the fantasy stuff and like the RPGs and like video games and stuff like that. So we actually set up a quest board for him where he has all of these tasks that he goes through and, and does every day and so he checks them off and as long as as long as everything is checked off at the end of the week he gets paid his salary and if he goes above and beyond we pay him more so he gets a bonus if like if say for instance he does extra stuff he tallies that up on the board so I see that oh there's a note you did this even though this wasn't on the list you went out of where you did that we pay him a bonus and he gets excited about it because then he has money that he can go and he can purchase things that he wants um, throughout the year in between his birthday and Christmas. ongoing mastitis treatment on Miss Annabelle. <sighs> I think I did it wrong, honestly. Um, I mean, I followed the instructions, but I think I was supposed to milk her more frequently because it didn't work the first pass, but uh, we're gonna try it again. I actually have some more coming in and we're gonna give it another go. This time I'm gonna milk her out, even though we're trying to dry her off. I want to make sure that this mastitis clears up before we actually dry her off. Um, we still got time. She's not expected due until the earliest of April. And we want to dry her off no later than February. So she has time to rest, put on more weight before she calves, and build that colostrum. Um, so that video is coming to you guys soon. Uh, just working on it, making sure that I do things right. And uh, then I can show you guys that. So we got the lawnmower back from the shop. Um, had a couple issues with the engine, um, but it's fixed now and um, I can finally come in and clean up. 
what the horses and cows didn't eat. So I'm gonna actually be mowing the pasture. But another project that I'm working on is the garden. So last year we had gotten our garden plot started. We had the chickens work on it. We brought the mulch in. Like we cleared the grass, everything, it was looking great. And then we came in, we planted, I think we planted somewhere in the bulk of work of like 400 to 500 plants. And it was looking great, it was looking amazing. And then this happened. We had three days, four days, actually four days of just non-stop pouring rain. And um, unfortunately, we discovered that a good section of the garden, uh, we have swales throughout our pasture and apparently going through the garden, there is enough of a swale that it floods, but not enough of a swale that you can visibly see that there is a swale there. And what a swale is basically is where the land hills like this and it kind of like makes like a wave pattern and it's it's essential for helping water flow across the pasture diverting water so that it equally waters the entire pasture it's great especially uh, very commonly used in orchards actually or groves and especially down here in florida well not good whenever you plant your garden and half of your garden is in the low section of a swale so unfortunately um more than half of our plants were underwater and they uh, they drowned. We lost we lost probably the ballpark of 40, 50 tomato plants, all of our cabbage, um, pretty much all of our squash. Green beans suffered. Amazingly enough, the loofah survived and you guys, if you follow our TikTok, you've seen our, our loofah harvest. Well, it's still ongoing. I don't know if you can see in the background, but that trellis, the trellis is a, there's still a loofah growing from last year. I actually cut it all back and left one vine and it took back over the trellis. Which I'm fine with that. Harvest the loofah, we'll probably sell it on, on Etsy. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it was um, honestly kind of defeating. And so I kind of let it go, let it drain. Um, nothing, like I said, just we lost probably about 75 to 85 percent of what we grew was gone. Um, I think we managed to get some peppers. Okra, okra survived. Apparently, okra loves water enough that it was able to survive in standing water for a period, and then went on to produce and thrive. And actually, I don't know if y'all can see it. There's some really tall stuff growing up. That's 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 the dead. That's the leftover okra. So um, it's kind of been on my list to get out here and start clearing it up. Um, Obviously, it's no go for planting in the wet season, the rainy season. Uh, we do plan on ultimately coming out and uh, kind of diverting the water flow around the garden, bringing in more soil to build it up higher so that um, the flooding issue is not an issue anymore. And uh, then I can actually garden in, in the rainy season and not worry about it. But for now, at least I can garden in the winter. I've just been so busy and honestly I had no motivation up until now to work on it because of how much work I put into it the last time only to lose it all so I'm gonna work on tackling at that now so we're gonna try and get this overgrowth tackled I'm gonna use the goats tie the goats up let them work on some of the overgrowth that I can't get to with the lawnmower cleared out so I can see the underbrush and then come in and clear it out mow it and uh, get it as low as possible to the ground and I'm gonna tarp it and let that cook in the sun because it's winter but I'm like I'm wearing a t-shirt right now because it's I think it's like 75 degrees right now and in the sun it's it's really really warm so we're gonna try and bake that soil uh, get get the stuff to break down get it back on its feet and going and maybe I can get at least something of a small crop of like some winter plants I mean honestly in Florida you can grow pretty much year round. I've grown tomatoes in the winter and some people were like, winter, I, I called them my winter tomatoes. Like it was, a, it was an experiment that I did and people were like, winter tomatoes? Cause I get that up north, you, you got snow, it's way too cold. And But down here, they don't thrive, but it is warm enough that you can grow tomatoes in Florida in the winter. I know, that's weird. Get waffle and saffron now. 
So apparently the, uh, the does, our female goats, are smarter than our bucks because uh, they got all this, all this stuff over here to graze. And they're just so focused on trying to get back to their pen that doesn't have as much forage anymore because they've eaten it down. Like, y'all aren't making no sense. Like, look at all that. And you're just not even. <laughs> the girls are going to town on their, their, their task though, so we'll let them hang out. I'm gonna walk away. On another note, I wanted to actually give a huge shout out and thank you to one of our subscribers. Um, we have a wonderful subscriber, her name is Jessie, and she owns a cup business. And she sent us in this wonderful cup for me to have to drink, keep hydrated and all that. And look at the back, look, the back has us on it. And there's like gold leaf on it. And then of course, our, uh, am I, is that the right? Our, uh, our, our banner, our logo, our organic life. And it is, oh, I love it, I love it. I, I'm definitely gonna be getting another one from her. She actually really does some amazing work. She's got cups that she, she basically completely customizes the cup. She has like sparkly cups, uh, cups with vinyls and decals, but then she also paints cups. She is an amazing artist. Um, so go check her out. I'm gonna leave a few links down below to go check her out. Um, send her some love. I love this. I love this. So now I have a cup that is customized that I can always see my loves on and I can stay hydrated now. Mocha, Sophie, y'all need to show them how it's done. So Saffron and Waffle are completely clueless over here. They have not eaten any of the stuff. They've been just so focused on trying to get back to their pen. So, but Mocha and Sophie over here have been having a ball. Go ahead and get you guys back in your pens. All right. They've done enough work for today. I'm going to go ahead and get them back in their pens. Um, and uh, go ahead and wrap it up out here. But I think what I'm going to probably have to do is I'm probably going to have to just run a perimeter fence. I'll run like a, the electric net around here and just put them in here. Probably have to do that. I don't want to do that, but I guess that's probably what we're going to end up having to do because it's just, it's so overgrown. It is so dense. I think that's what we're going to have to do.